Often called the Venice of the North, Amsterdam is home to more than 60 miles of canals. Built in the 17th century, these tall and narrow merchant houses lining the canal are now emblematic of the city's skyline. But a team of young Dutch architects is hoping to give a new look to the traditional canal house, swapping brick and mortar for bioplastic and construction workers for a 3D printer. I'm one of the co-founders of Dus Architects and uh, right here on the building site of the 3D Print Canal House uh, it's basically a kind of open exhibition and uh, building site where in the upcoming three years we're investigating what the impact is of 3D printing on the building industry. The Dutch project, both a building site and museum, is gaining fame in the movement to build 3D houses which could bring a breakthrough in both custom and affordable housing worldwide. The main goal is, I think, to really deliver new custom-made architecture. And that means that you really print site-specific. So in the Western world, it will be much more about unique objects, fancy designs. Uh, but I can imagine that in other parts of the globe, uh, this technique can really accommodate cheap, ecological, affordable housing for the masses. Or just imagine that in refugee areas, you just bring a printer there, and suddenly with local soil or local materials, you can really print in a fast manner uh, a lot of refugee homes. We have some challenges at the moment with seven billion people on this planet fast-growing cities all over the world. We have to come up with new techniques and new ways of organizing cities. These 3D housing advancements are already underway. This year, a company in China reportedly printed 10 houses in a single day. The architects from Winsun say these houses only cost $5,000 each to produce. Meanwhile, at the University of Southern California, Professor Baroque Koshnavis is pushing the concept further, building a gigantic 3D printer that can print an entire home at once including concrete, electrical wiring, and plumbing. He calls the technique contour crafting. So contour crafting is basically scaling up 3D printing to the scale of buildings. What we are hoping to generate are entire neighborhoods that are dignified at a fraction of the cost, at a fraction of the time, far more safely, and uh, with architectural flexibility that would be unprecedented. Amsterdam, China, California. Architects around the world have started a race to create the first 3D printed house. Well, we thought in order to 3D print architecture, we need a big printer. And we realized that there wasn't one available yet. So then we just started to uh, invent it ourselves. And the result you see now outside. This is the Kamer Maker, Dutch for room maker, a three and a half meter tall printer that sits inside a shipping container. Layer by layer, what might first look like black lines will eventually become the structure of the building. Each of the 13 rooms will be printed separately and then assembled together in one singular house. The project is expected to take three years. The material we use is actually based on uh, plants or line seed. Sustainability is a very important part in 3D printing, I guess, because you don't need transport that much, you don't have that much of waste, and you can use bio-based materials, for example. The structure is then consolidated with a foamy bio-concrete poured inside the shafts. And this is, of course, for making it stronger. So when you stand on this, you see, okay, this can, uh, this can go into a house which goes up 50 meters high. Yeah? Extreme customization, tailor-made designs and new materials. These are just part of the potential of 3D housing. Of course, as an architect, that maybe in the future we eliminate ourselves because everyone can become a designer. Uh, but that's also the reason why we wanted to do this, because we thought, um, what will this technique mean for our profession? And there's only one way to find out, and that's by doing it. Mm -hmm.